<laughs> oh shit! Why hello there! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome back to a special edition of Super Mystery Bros, episode number 23, our 2023 Halloween Night Marathon. My name is Nate, and back with me is the epic return of Ivan. And we've all missed you dearly, man. Where have you been? Just in the pipeline, filling in time? Yeah, something like that. Something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. So tonight we're doing something a little special uh, in honor of one of my personal favorite holidays, Halloween. So, Ivan, what is it that you brought with you tonight over to my house? Tonight, what, what I've is this? brought something special. A golden bottle of Nerpa vodka. Yeah. And made with uh, Alpha Spirit or whatever they call it. And uh, water from the Lake Baikal, man. The yeah. biggest lake in the world. It tastes just like vodka to me, but um, I'm feeling pretty good. So I can't complain. So how do you guys celebrate Halloween? Comes from the devil, man. We don't... Oh, it's the satanic Western holiday? Yeah, yeah. All those people dressing up in those freaking fancy Moscow clubs, you know? Going yeah. going after... Worshipping the devil and shit? Doing some nasty n nasty things, you know? <laughs> yeah, like what? How, how do they call it? Like maybe some orgies and shit, you know? Oh, it's fucked up, man. This is, this, <laughs> this is a family show, man. Come oh, family on. show? This is a family show. Come oh, on. we're going to delete that. Okay. <laughs> they, they just, you know, go after it, having fun, getting, uh, <laughs> getting, <laughs> getting drunk and shit, you know. That. Yeah, so I've got Ivan here, but Peter might come later for our discussion. So, Ivan, I've got a question to ask you, though, before we begin. Mm. What can our listeners do to help us in our spine-tingling journey into the dark and nightmarish world of the unknown? Dear listeners, there are many ways. First of all, you can leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or star rating on Spotify. You can follow us on Instagram. Oh, now we've got Instagram. We've Some got Instagram updates, now. Man. Yeah, follow us. You can hand out fortune cookies this hello. <laughs> Hang on, man. What's, what's our Instagram handle? Uh, at Super Mystery Bros. All right, good. You can hand out fortune cookies this Halloween with fortunes that all say, listen to Super Mystery Bros, man. Yep. Tell at least one friend or family member you think would like our show. Uh, our show. Yeah, pretty much. Right on, man. Is there anything else that you'd like to say up front before we begin? Not yet, man. But we yeah. can start. Just to let all of our listeners know, though, this one's going to be more of a casual episode. Like we might go off road at time from time to time because this one's kind of a holiday special. So that's fair warning to you. If you fucking care about your hosts going off on tangents, maybe don't listen to this one. I don't know. The so-called butterfly effect aptly named after the idea that something so seemingly small and insignificant like a butterfly flapping its wings can alter the course of history in an exponential manner as time echoes on into the future. You and I were born as the people we are today due to the sum of all previous events of the past, no matter how big or how small. The universe is deeply interconnected, and no person, place, or event is an island that exists on its own in a perfect vacuum. A simple act, such as accepting an offer to do a photo shoot for some quick and easy cash, can unwittingly lead to unforeseen and dire consequences for years into the future. And as fate would have it, one unidentified Western gentleman living in China would undoubtedly find out the hard way. You may have seen his mugshot plastered on a huge roadside billboard. 
You may have seen his face on the side of the bus. You may have seen him in an airport. You may have even seen him come and try and kill you in your dreams. Like a real life Freddy Krueger. Tonight, dear listener, we take you on a shadowy flight into the nightmarish world of a man who is to sleep and sleep accessories. What Hank Hill is to propane and propane accessories. A man so mysterious and potentially sinister that he is known only by one name. The Jeruchi guy. Our story begins in 2004. Representatives from a burgeoning mattress manufacturer based in Dongguan, Guangdong, China, sent out representatives far and wide throughout the region, looking for the perfect foreign face to promote their new brand called Daruchi, which sought to dominate the Chinese market by selling luxury mattresses for a fraction of the cost. According to legend, they would soon find their man, a wise, older and distinguished looking Caucasian gentleman who was teaching English in a small town. When offered, he agreed to do a photo shoot for the paltry sum of just $1,500. What originally was supposed to be just a quick and easy way of making some extra money soon spiraled out of control, and our lives would never be the same. The consequences from this one simple decision would alter the course of human history and lead to one of China's and then later, the world's most enduring and legendary mysteries. The year was 2004, while Usher, Lil Jon, and Ludacris ruled the airwaves of every radio station in the West, and VH1 reality TV shows dominated cable television. A storm of epic proportion was brewing in the land of China. So just to let the cat out of the bag here, Ivan and I, we actually met in China. Do you want to explain the situation to our, our audience, how we met? Um, yeah, it was an um, interesting situation. I remember... You don't, have, you don't have to tell them the exact city or university. That, yeah, yeah, but... of course. But we, we, we met on one, uh, on the, uh, during the Chinese class, on the Chinese class, yeah. right? So we Ivan and I, in, in 2016, I think it was, you were also taking Chinese classes in the same class as me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We were like in uh, the, on the second level or something like that, right? Yeah, we were the, what was it, like the third, the third of the elementary level? Or the second, courses? maybe the second one. And then we, we did the first. No, I think third. it was the third, wasn't it? I think it was the second one. And then we did defer the next semester. Oh, that's what it but was. But anyway. Yeah, anyway. But yeah, Ivan and I, we, we met in China. And do we still live there? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We're still here. And uh, yeah, I remember during one of the classes, I, I think at, at the point, I think I, I didn't know that you studied Chinese before. You you, you studied it before, right? Before I studied coming it, here. Uh, I studied it like for a couple semesters in college back in the states and then i came over here yeah and i and i remember during one of the classes the teacher asked asked us to like uh to divide in the groups you know yeah to do some group work and um yeah i remember that day i we were like working together or something and i was like shit this guy is cheating or something you know because <laughs> because you were like kind of you know speaking a little bit more i was like yeah. Maybe just a little bit more experience. Than, yeah, yeah. You, uh, I felt like you had more, like some insider knowledge or something. But I think, I think we're the only two left here from that class. I think everyone else has moved on, right? Oh, uh, gone back to other countries. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone else is still here. I think it's just us. Maybe one. Well, uh, that guy from Pakistan is still here. We're not not gonna name names, but he's, oh, I think he's still here. But he's not in the same city. Uh, as probably us. not in the same city, but I think he's no. still in China. Yeah, but yeah. most of the people, they, uh, yeah, they left. Oh, yeah. Well, moving on. So just to describe real quick, in China, there's a term called the white monkey or white monkey job. So it's where people they just kind of pay you to show up and be somewhere and pretend to be more important than you really are. So. All they want is a foreign face, whether that's for photography. It could be all different kinds of reasons. Have you ever done a white monkey job here? No. 
Is that a no you haven't or no you don't want to talk about it? Mm, just no. <laughs> I, I've done I've done I've done one. I've what, done what, one. What, what, what kind of what kind of So I, I am kind of like the Daruchi guy of a gas and oil company here. For real, man. You're like Hen Hill kind of. Yeah. I sell fracking and fracking accessories, man. For real? Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, this is the only one, the first and the last one I've done, man. So um, examples of white monkey gigs include pretending to be a wealthy and influential person's friend at an event, pretending to be a high-ranking employee in a Chinese company, um, a clothing model, uh, just random advertisements, promotional events, other miscellaneous gigs that involve promoting a Chinese company, usually. Yeah, uh, here I wanted to like interject and maybe di- discuss a little bit about uh, uh, discuss this term a little bit white monkey and i think it's kind of uh it's racist huh yeah uh kind of racist but i once uh, i also wanted to say that actually it takes uh i would say a lot of courage to do these kind of things even though maybe some people they of course do it for the um, materialistic reasons you know to get paid because sometimes they pay quite well for those things but still for someone to, for example, get on stage and talk about some uh, company or whatnot, it takes uh, courage. For, uh, it, it's actually second. First thing is just to come here. It's also kind of, you know, it's not everybody's... It was the bravest thing I ever did, man. It's, it's not everybody's uh, pile of soup or how... how it's, how, not, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah, no. not everybody's no. <laughs> cup of tea. I so. still have trouble, man. So it's like, you know... Maybe just white, not white monk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what do you mean by that? Uh, what, do, what, what do you mean? Uh, I, I mean, saying white monk is like saying they're like, uh, you know, those animals in the zoo, like being like... I, 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 think, I think it's more like the dancing monkey. Or like I think, the... I think that's what they're referring circus, to. You mean you, the, yeah, like a circus or something. I think that's kind of more what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but the, the thing is like that for the monkeys, it's way easier. Those are like beings uh, being driven by their instincts and stuff, you know. They don't have to do with the uh, human conscience and shit. <laughs> and they, they don't have to, you know, be brave to do that yeah. stuff. So I think, um, yeah, I think they're like pretty courageous people to doing those two things. The white to, monkey jobs? To, to come here first is kind of yeah cool, right? And then to do that, you it, you got to have some balls, I think, to do that, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. To do a white monkey job? It, right? Yeah, the, it's it's got to be either the first or the second. So if you are, if you have big balls, then yeah, we support you. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, I think we've digressed, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one famous and unfortunate example of a poorly executed Western, quote unquote, air quotes, spokesman for a Chinese product would be a man by the name of Richard from England. So let's roll the clip. I am Richard from England, European general again of the ginger boss. I am a very demanding person for food and I chose John because of the heat standards and heat quality of John's products. It has passed the European certification and the certification of the global BRC agents. It is the world's food industry. The two certifications with very heat gold content in the original material. Only the large white garlic in Yunnan province Dali Madhu Kong in fermentation, strict 120 day fermentation process. Single thing, let garlic energy up to 1100 yellow joules. Very heat nutrition. And we're back. So that was Richard from London Oblast. And in case you couldn't understand him through his heavy British accent, he was doing an advertisement for some garlic company, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so what did you think about, about Richard from England? I, what, what can I say about him? I, good job, man. Very nice. Yeah, I, I just don't understand why they didn't just find a Chinese person who spoke decent enough English uh, and then, like, dubbed over his voice for, instead. Uh, did you find that the, there was 
some problem with the lip sync or something. I, I noticed that too. Yeah. Yeah. In certain parts, I think he fucked words up and then he, he had to like go back in post to correct it. So it, it looked like an old Kung Fu movie that was dubbed over, even though it was like, or do you think uh, if it's possible that the original guy actually did it in some other language and then they freaking hired someone to do the English dub for it? Maybe uh, that, that guy did it in German or French or something. It's hard to say because I'm not good at either of those languages. At the beginning of the video, it, it looks like his lip his lips sync up fine. But then at the at the towards the end when they cut back to him, his lips are out of sync. So it sounds like to me he might have gone back and post to correct certain pronunciations oh, oh, or something. Maybe, maybe. I think that's what I took away from it anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, he was advertising some garlic company. Oh, some, that's fine. Don't worry about it. So let's just describe the video. So yeah. it's just some white guy, probably Eastern European or maybe French. I, I thought he was like Eastern European. What did you make of it? Probably. Eastern European. Mm. Did, was that a Russian accent? Would you say? Uh, it's it's really hard to say and like to be precise with the accents, but I'm maybe. horrible with with accents. Maybe, maybe. Um, I mean, he can barely speak English, as you can probably hear. He's he's wearing a suit and tie. He's sitting down in a chair in front of the camera. Um, the backdrop looks really fancy. There's like a B roll of him inspecting an empty bottle of wine in a wine cellar. Like, oh, this is a nice bottle of wine, but it's empty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I just hope he wasn't working as an English teacher. Otherwise, those kids are screwed. Yeah, and uh, about that video, I gotta use this opportunity to because in the video he he talked about uh, Dali, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I would like to take this opportunity to, to promote it. You know, in a way, I think it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the most beautiful places in uh, in China, and maybe maybe even like. Like of all I've of I've all the there, so. all, of all the places I've been to, uh, I haven't been to too many places, but still, it's like one of the definitely one of the best places. It's uh, got mountains, uh, lakes, uh, super clean air, a lot of local uh, agriculture, and the way that you describe it to me, it sounds it sounds really nice. And uh, Asian city and freaking a lot of uh, international food as well. So it's uh, yeah, guys, if you ever have a chance, just. Go Check it da out. Go to Dali. Check it out. Dali. Yeah. yeah. Awesome place. Yeah. So going back to the white monkey phenomenon, it's sort of like it's a it's just a weird phenomenon where having a foreign a foreign face involved lends more credibility to whatever is being promoted. So despite the high pay for little to no work, the risk of being exploited is still there because you're not protected by any laws. It's important to point out that in China, older men are seen as wise and respected, and having a Western face to back your product or company in some form or fashion is seen to lend more credibility toward it. In the case of the older gentleman that the representatives from the Jerucci mattress company found, he fit the mold perfectly when it came to lending credibility to this Chinese company. He was an older looking Caucasian man, perhaps in his 60s with a serious and stern look in his face, looking like a discount or even counterfeit version of Steve Jobs, wearing circular frame glasses, subliminally telling any and all the viewers of the Jirushi advertisements that their mattresses were serious business. And they are the cat's pajamas. They're the fucking shit. The name Jirushi itself sounds very Italian. Conjuring up images of high quality sports cars and other high end luxury products. Actually, he kind of reminded me of the Hugh Laurie man. I don't know why. He I, reminds I, me of Steve Jobs to me. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know why he reminds me of Hugh Laurie. I get, you, get, you get Steve Jobs vibes if you look at him. Yeah. Okay. It, I think that's what they were going for. So, in the photo shoot, the thin, white haired, bearded man was photographed staring directly into the camera with a stern look on his face, wearing a white button-up shirt, holding a tobacco pipe up to the left corner of his mouth using, using his left hand. It's unclear what expectations this man had for how they would use his photo, but what is clear is that he probably had no idea what the significance would be. Much like the face of Colonel Sanders is to KFC, this unknown foreign gentleman 
would become the face of the entire Deruche mattresses company, which reported 700 million in revenue in 2019 alone, making it one of the largest manufacturers of mattresses in the entire world. Maybe in the universe, who knows, man. In the later years, the company would photoshop the tobacco, tobacco pipe out of his mouth to promote a more positive image of the company. But his stern mugshot would live on through eternity, being plastered all over billboards, the sides of trucks, giant as glowing airport advertisements, and other locations all over the world. It's nearly impossible to traverse through an airport in Asia without seeing his face on hundreds of advertisements throughout, staring directly into the souls of million travelers and calling out to them to buy Diruchi mattresses and mattresses accessories. But who is he? Nobody knows. Alright, so um, do you remember when the first time you saw the Diruchi guy was? I remember the first time I saw him. Tell me about it, man. Uh, I was in the Hong Kong airport, actually. And I, w I remember I was waiting in line somewhere. I can't remember exactly where, but I was waiting in line in the airport. And I was like, there, this big ass Darucci advertisement was right in front of me in, in this line, you know? And I, was, I just couldn't stop staring at this guy's face. The dude is mesmerizing in this weird way. Like mm -hmm. you, if, if you see him and there's nothing else to look at, your eyes just immediately go to his face. Like you just can't stop looking at his face and you're like, who the fuck is this guy? He looks like a, I don't know, dude. He looks like he toils in his sleep workshop all day and just comes up with dope ass sleep technology. That's all he lives for is just sleep technology. What about you, man? Do you remember the first time you saw him? Oh, yeah, 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 I remember, on, I remember, I remember, I remember, man, I remember. Stop, stop lying to the audience, okay? It's always a, a curious question. Are you lying to yourself or are you lying to yes, the audience? Yes, yes, Do you actually... That's the real question. Are you lying you, to yourself or the audience? Do you actually see the reality as it is or are you just like, you know, projecting your own shit onto it? You well, know? I'm just saying, man, like this guy allegedly comes into people's dreams and kills them. So that's why I wanted to ask you, you know, to freaking redirect the question, to dodge the bullet, you know, as they say, in the yeah. Texas or, okay. you know, anywhere. Is it only in Texas, huh? I don't know, man. <laughs> so, so, how did it make you feel again? Can you just expand on that a little bit, man? When I first saw him, you mean? Yeah, so he, you said he's kind of like stared into your soul trying to promote The only thing I can tell you, the only thing I can tell you, man, is I couldn't stop staring at the guy. I was waiting in line. Some, I think I was waiting in line to get my my passport stamped, you know, so that I could enter Hong Kong. And then, um, I, I just there's this big ass advertisement with the Daruchi guy just staring into my soul, and I couldn't stop staring back. And I remember I was like trying to look away from him, but I, I just couldn't stop looking at him. I was just like this, you know, just staring staring up at the advertisement. And it was kind of unsettling, man. So I'll be what, honest, it was unsettling. So you would say, you would consider it to be a little bit of a traumatic experience, man? Um, <laughs> to an extent, yes. It was a little bit traumatic, but I got over it. You got over it. Through years of therapy. Yeah. So yeah. now you are like kind of brave enough to talk about it. on the. I'm brave enough to confront this mystery head on. I'll say, it, I'll put it like that. It's a good progress, man. Thanks. I wanted to read an article written by Cam Tyson from pedestrian.tv because it sums up and conveys the feeling of having to walk through any airport in recent years and having to steer down the Daruchi man in every direction that you look. So the article begins as follows. If I had to say one thing about myself, it's that I'm a big fan of flying. I absolutely love strapping my hulking frame into a tiny seat and zooming off to another part of the globe. It's great, and I love it. I love airports too, would you believe? The hustle, the bustle, the crippling time anxiety, the overpriced everything, the people standing in line, it's great. Up, up, and away, baby. Here we go. What I don't love, though, is having my soul dragged out of my asshole by the terrifying Darucci sleep man every time I visit an airport. At Melbourne Airport, the 
face of your worst, worst dreams has hung large over the arrival and departure lanes for many years, thanks to a pair of monolithic billboards for the baffling, omnipresent Chinese betting manufacturer. Now, let's not get it twisted here. I legitimately love flying, spending hours jammed into a sardine tube of farts with nowhere to escape the worst habits of humans is a giddy thrill to me. What I don't love, though, is Dr. Insomnia gawking at me through his night-night goggles while I'm trying to scan my frequent flyer card. And look, I don't want to mince any words here. I absolutely adore air travel, be it domestic or international. You're telling me I get to share the cold some snotty dirtbag in 14B brought on board while I eat a soggy gray sausage that's so full of salt it gums up my colon for a week? Sign me up. What I don't love, though, is being hit with Rip Van Wanker's ball sack-like scone smacking me in the chin <laughs> two, two seconds after I step foot off the bloody sky bus. It's hard to pin down just what in the name of $15 pints at the airport bar is so off-putting about the Darucci sleep man. His f- is a face of many mysteries. He looks like you'll just wake up one night and he'll be there, in the corner, concealed by the dark, illuminated only by the glow of a pipe, watching you. He looks like he has several ornamental syringes on display at all times and will constantly offer you a shoulder massage, which you won't accept because you're too scared of him ever being behind you. He looks like he collects skins. End of article. So what did you think about that article, man? What are your thoughts? What I can say, I really loved his... I really liked... I'm fond of his (laughs) uh, Uh description of the modern air travel, you know? Yeah, I actually, I share his love of airports too and flying and traveling in general too. Um, you know, but for me, once I'm, once I'm actually in the airport, uh, it just gets really old really fucking fast and I just want to get to my fucking destination. Jammed into a sardine cube of part uh, with nowhere to escape. That's poetic. So poetic. Really. poetic. He, he did a good job, man, this guy. You know? But sometimes, man, during those air travels, they'll give you the freaking blanket, man. When was the last time you flew? Shit, I think it was from Phuket to here. Oh. The, the last time you we went to Thailand, remember? Okay, so we've got like a post on Instagram about that, guys. Do it, or that might have been on our last Instagram. Yes, one of the that, last well, Instagrams. I'm know. not sure if it's on our current one, but anyway, it's somewhere there. Yeah, we went to Thailand. And then, yeah, I, I remember. But sometimes they'll they'll give you those freaking nice blankets, man. You know, to fart in or not to fart in, you to cover yourself. You know, it's kind of feel kind but of. But if you got a fart, man, you don't want to like you know release the hounds. You know, yeah, it's like that video from Instagram with the guy, you know, trying to cough, <laughs> pretending <laughs> he's just coughing, you know, but the fart was way too loud, you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, the, and then the people in the elevator saying, man, like, seriously, dude, man, you got to pretend that it was just like coffee, man. <laughs> Come on, leave the elevator. But it, the blanket wouldn't help with the farts, man. It's still going to smell like shit, you know? Okay. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, it just makes you feel like at home kind of thing, you know? Then they give you, not not the farting, you know? I mean, the blanket. Then they give you the blanket to cover yourself, feel yeah. cozy and shit. I, I, okay. I think we've digressed, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you continue on with the uh, story? Uh, according to Wall Street Journal, Derushi has been criticized by many people, especially in China, for using a white man's image and trying to pass itself off as a European company. Then, in fact, it's a Chinese company from top to bottom. The company name, the man they use as its mascot, the stock imagery they use, all imply that it's a European company, and many can argue that the company's success has been due to the, this face that the company has created. Since even in China, many people regard foreign products as superior to domestic ones. Jirucci has achieved a level of success that few companies could ever dream of achieving, being a household name all around the world and selling hundreds of millions of dollars worth of mattresses every year. It's arguable that if 
it had promoted itself as overtly Chinese, it would not have seen the amount of success that it had. Fake it till you make it, as they say, right, man? As they say in the biz, man. As they say in the biz. The man's image is now so iconic that he's become synonymous with the brand, and his image has popped up all over the world. In Sydney, Australia in 2014, Darucci held what was called the Darucci Sleep Festival. One billboard advertising it was located on Parramatta Road in Sydney, which had a huge picture of the man on it. It read, quote, custom made for a good night's sleep. Darucci Australasian Sleep Festival, Sydney, November 22 through November 30th, end quote. It was freaking people out enough for The Guardian to write an entire article about it. In addition to mattresses being on display at this event, a life-sized bronze statue of the Darucci guy himself was on full display, sitting on a bench, wearing the same white shirt from the ad with a tobacco pipe raised up to his mouth and his legs crossed, giving the thinker statue a run for its money. This same statue, or copies of it, can be found in Darucci retail stores all over the globe, making for the perfect selfie opportunity for fans of the Darucci guy. Man, uh, I up? think I never heard term Australasian before uh, i think that just means asia plus australia you know like from asia yeah, down yeah to i australia. know but i think it just yeah i don't know it's, i never heard it before well now you did good every day for something like new like the that song from the more from you, know. you know every day for something new or something along those lines. yeah 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 nothing else matters right yeah 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 it's a good song yeah, yeah, yeah. uh i continue go for it man it's all you, right? And again, going back to the, how do you say, like the, what the, what do they say about the Pope in Rome, man? Vul, 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 vulnerable? Like, you know? Venerable? Venerable. Uh, going back to Venerable Wall Street Journal. In the 2019, Derucci even hired legendary NBA star Kobe Bryant to host the company's sponsored, sponsored tournament in China, stating in one promotional clip, Quote, remember, sleep well tonight, and I'll see you in Beijing, end quote. An Australian competitor, Koala Mattresses, even made a spoof version of the ad using its company founder, a bald man with glasses and bird. Beard, right? Not a bird. He, no, no, it's okay. He, he, he doesn't have a bird. He just has a, he just has a beard, right? <laughs> dressed in the same white shirt as the Dirushi guy, staring at the camera in the same creepy way, which reads, quote, The Koala. Koala. De Koala. Australia's least pretentious mattress, end quote. Yeah. So um, I just want to note here that I haven't been back to the States in over six years, so I'm not sure just how prevalent the Dirushi guy is in the US, but I do know that he is a thing. Like, I just don't know how exactly big of a thing that he is. And I'd love to know if any of our American listeners, which are about 63% of our audience, um, I'd like to know how familiar, how familiar you are with him. Um, because it seems like he was a bigger thing in Australia and Asia, mainly. What, so, what was the D Koala guy also famous? or Well, D... De, de koala I, I think it's actually just koala but but de koala this ad that we're I like the kind of thing exactly okay, they, they're okay, making gotcha, fun gotcha, of him gotcha, gotcha, yeah they're gotcha, making gotcha. fun of him but was he also like worldwide phenomenal like the Ruchi guy or just australian i think just local? australia uh, because it's australia's least pretentious mattress mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i have a question because you were like you know uh you know you you you've seen the Diruchi guy and it had a strong impression on you so you even decided yeah. to make an episode about him yeah. you know yeah. so how would you like describe the Australian ad like uh, the in comparison to the Diruchi guy what's the impression um, even though it's not live but still well okay okay so if I were to compare the two the Australian ad the guy in the ad it looks like he's trying too hard look to kind of to mock the Diruchi guy um, he's staring at the camera like a complete psychopath, whereas 
the Darucci guy is a little bit more subtle. Just kind of, you know, na- it more was subtle. kind of natural for him, right? Yeah, and like the the De Koala, the guy who's making fun of the Darucci guy, he's you know, he's got his eyes like bug like bug eyed, and he's just his lips are all plumped out, like he's trying to blow his mouth out. He kind something. of knows what he does, right? He's kind of like I'm trying to be like. Yeah, he's wearing the exact same goddamn fucking shirt as the Darucci guy, even. Oh shit! Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah, the yeah, same yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking shirt. Yeah. So yeah, he's clearly mocking the Darucci guy, which I mean, so from my understanding and my research, the Darucci guy is more prevalent in Asia. Like I even saw him in the Bangkok airport when we went to Bangkok about it almost a year ago. Saw him everywhere in the Bangkok airport. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I understand, he's all over the airports in in uh, Australia too. He's also in the U.S., but I think to a, a somewhat lesser extent, and also probably in Europe too. So, so trying to go back to kind of a tabula rasa status. Just imagine, man. Try to imagine the situation that you never seen the Diruchi ad, yeah. you never seen the the koala ad. Yeah, you see them side by side, and you you have to make a choice, man. Bullet to your head, you know. Bullet, to, gun to my head, you gun, mean. Gun, gun to, to my <laughs> head. Gun to your head, man. Yeah. You you gotta make a choice. Which mattress you gotta you will choose, man. The Rush or the Koala. Oh, you man. have no background info on that. Okay, okay, man. Let me let me take a take a sip of this soda water real quick. You know, I think I got to go with De Koala. And the reason I say this is because I've always been partial to Australia, Australians, Australian culture. Mm-hmm. I just always like that country. You know, if I, if I were to be born again, I think I would want to be born as an Australian. All Australian listeners, guys. All two, one or two of you, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I, but only based on that. But if I were to base it on just the guy, I would go with the Ruchi guy. Because mm-hmm. that guy just, mm-hmm. he speaks to my soul. Not in a good way, but I think he would compel me to buy uh, his mattresses. Yeah, good point. But I I kind of find the freaking uh, blue background a little bit more calming, you know? Kind of makes you want to like sleep and okay so the day koala background is is blue whereas the Daruchi background is black black it makes you like kind of you know a little bit worried sometimes i think yeah i guess i mean i i don't i think the Daruchi ad is like more clean it's more straight to the point kind of the day koala looks a little bit more ikea ish you know ikea you know like more like more like cheap fucking i don't know I mean, that's, that's the what I. I took mean, from we, it. we don't have IKEA back home anymore, man. R.I.P. Man, we have something else. I I don't remember the name. We could discuss it, but I don't remember the name. <laughs> but uh, that's a sad story, man. That really sad story. So, but here we still have IKEA. So yeah. Anyway, I don't well, um, digress. Do you want to uh, continue on here? Yeah. All right. So, despite millions of people mocking his picture and advertisements. His image has served its purpose by making a name for the company through the morbid curiosity of hapless onlookers. And it's easy to argue that without him, the company may have been relegated to the dustbin of history. Although nobody seems to know his true identity, he's been dubbed as the most famous face in China. I thought it was you, man. I'm the second most famous face in China, actually. So. All right. Today... It's unclear where the Jiruchi guy is now, whether he's still alive out there in the ether. Or if, and if so, whether he's aware that his face has been plastered all over the planet, intriguing and or giving billions of people. <laughs> <laughs> The wheelies. What are the wheelies, man? So the willies are like giving you the creeps. Oh, the creeps. Yeah, it's like giving you the creeps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. According to the legend, on every Halloween night, if you say, Sleep tight, Jiroshi guy, 
14 times while staring directly into a shiny metal bed frame. It's said that he'll appear in the reflection behind you and offer you a hit on his ghostly tobacco pipe. Wow, man. So I think it's time for us to solve this some bitch once and for all, man. So let's wait for Peter to arrive and then we'll get Peter's thoughts on the Daruchi guy. And then we'll pick this back up when he arrives. Sounds okay. good to me, man. All right. To put the how to say, fence down and look at the vagina. Hey, this is a fucking family show, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Peter Peter is finally here. And uh, Peter, I want to know what you think about this Daruchi guy that we're talking about. What are your thoughts about the Daruchi guy? Where do you think he is now? And where do you think that he came from? Yeah, I heard that you guys are going to... I heard that you guys are going to make a podcast, a series about some guy in uh, advertisement who um, was uh, like kind of famous and then in one advertisement and after that nobody knows about him but i didn't think this is that guy he is really fucking famous maybe in any airport i can you can see his face maybe maybe even now yeah yeah so last time i was in thailand i saw him in the airport even there in thailand too. I, even I in thailand only in china yeah even in Thailand. Do, do, do you remember when was the first time you saw him? You've seen him? Yeah, the first time was in... Uh, uh, what, 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 what is the name? Xuan Liu. Yeah, Xuan Liu Airport. You saw him at the, uh, in Chengdu. Yeah. Oh. How, how, uh, how did it make you feel? Like a little bit strange. Like... I, I don't really believe this guy. He looks too serious, I think. For a guy who, who make matrices. <laughs> <laughs> he actually looks like... I Now I, I look at his picture and feel like I'm uh, watching a movie of this uh, guy who eats people. So what, what, what is the name of the movie? Uh, Silence of the Lambs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you think he's like this, the, guy, the Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what, what year what do you remember which year you saw him first no i don't remember Maybe. like how how long ago do you remember uh, at least four years ago I at least four years but before covid before covid okay yeah. so for me the first the first time i remember seeing him definitively was probably 2016 yeah yeah because I remember I, I, I went to the Hong Kong airport and I that was the first time that I actually consciously noticed him. I was waiting in line, the Hong Kong airport. I couldn't stop staring at the guy because he was like right. He was like in this <laughs> giant advertisement in this line I was standing in. I couldn't stop staring at him. And um, yeah, man, he made me want to buy a fucking mattress from, the, from him. Man. I don't know how to explain it. Have you bought it? Not yet, but maybe I will. Yeah. The, you, you remember during the episode, I said he kind of reminded me of Hugh Laurie, the guy who played uh, Dr. House. Uh -huh. I don't oh, know, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, if you yeah, watched yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't really look like Hugh Laurie, but the he persona does. and the image, you know, it kind of ways kind of reminded me of him. No, to me, to me, fucking way more like Steve Jobs to me. Uh, Steve Jobs. Yeah, a little bit, but the, the he's got Peter's glasses, but also like Steve Jobs looks. You know, like kind of like a a grizzled old man who seriously cares about sleep technology. <laughs> <laughs> like he 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 treats sleep technology like it's some serious fucking business. I, just, I, I, I can tell you, I can just imagine this guy saying like, whether it's lupus, HIV. Hepatitis, freaking coronavirus, yeah. or whatever you have, man. The Dirucci yeah. matrices will solve it all, man. Kind of like this, you know? Yeah. So I'll, I've got to say, man, like from a marketing standpoint, the guy's photo is perfect. Or, or maybe he's like, he's looking kind of down on you saying like, it's fucking time to take your sleep seriously, man. You gotta sleep freaking eight hours, you know, kind of thing, you know? Yeah. 
kind of like that. You gotta buy the Diruchi mattresses. You gotta sleep eight hours, man. Dude, it's like it's more like if you don't have a Diruchi mattress, just fucking kill yourself right now. <laughs> just fucking kill yourself if you don't have a Diruchi mattress. Those those are the vibes, man. Yeah, this is the vibes that you get. And the the background kind of accentuates it, and it's focuses on his. He's kind of looking down on people, I think, man. I think he kind of is. Like, if you look, if you look at his picture, he's kind of like. Let me scroll down to his picture real quick. Where is his picture? He's kind of like young man. Get your life together and shit. You know, kind you of get thing. your shit together and buy a fucking Daruchi mattress. And otherwise, you like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, he, yeah, about, those vibes, man. Yeah. Definitely. What about you, Peter? I feel like he he just saying like, stop doing, guy, stop doing it, guy, start to live a normal life, something like this. I uh, I think this podcast might be really like you know transformative, you know. I think it's it. I think it. I think it is transformative, and I think it's um. All right. So, is there anything else that you guys want to talk about when it comes to the Jerucha guy? Um, I do want to ask each of you. Do you think the guy is still alive today? Do you think that he understands where he is in society? Do you think that he understands how famous he's gotten? Do actually, you think that he knows? Actually, last time I, I had like a pre-discussion with Ivan, and I have an idea that maybe he, this guy, didn't exist in any like, no, at all, at all. Yeah, maybe Do you think he's like, fake? AI, uh, the root you think that he's AI an guy. AI generated guy? Maybe just for testing AI that time, you know? Yeah, I don't know, but you think that he might be AI generated? Probably, you know, maybe he's just too perfect, too perfect, too perfect, too perfect <laughs> for what reason? <laughs> <laughs> you just said a lot of stuff about this guy, like, uh. About this photo for making like a advertisement for mattresses. So yeah, that's why I say he's too perfect. You think that he's just too perfect? So you think that he's it might be AI generated? Yeah. Why okay. not? Yeah. Ivan, what are your thoughts about this whole case? Give me, give me your thoughts from top to bottom, man. Who is the Daruchi guy? Oh, hold on. Who is Daruchi guy, and why? Why? Why what? Why did he do it? Just okay. Why? Just 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 why? Just why? Just why? Who is Daruchi guy, and why? Yeah, that's uh. Tell you what, man. Tell you what. Tell me what, man. Tell that's me. um a good question. But how can we approach this mystery? I mean, who is he? And why did he do that? And okay, so not only who is the Daruchi guy and why, but also do you think that he knows that what happens to his picture? Oh, okay. Let me uh, let me start with the easiest questions. Probably okay. Okay, go for it. Considering that international travel is available to like I guess most of the human population right now don't quote don't quote me on that but probably he is really aware of the fact that he became the international phenomenal uh -huh. while uh the the worldwide star and uh whatnot you know yeah that's uh the answer to that question who is that guy uh i, I actually really like the peter's hypothesis that he might be an ai generated image yeah, it's a uh, it's a valid hypothesis too, but uh, if he's a real guy, and uh, if he's, you know, by any chance, right, so hold on, do you think that he's AI generated or do you think that he's a real guy? Because according to legend, this guy's photograph was taken in two thousand four. This particular, this particular, two thousand four. That's a little early for AI generated photographs. A little bit early, yeah. That, that's way early for at the time that would be like top notch technology. Dude, I was in high stuff. school in two thousand four, so they wouldn't have all these Japanese ladies AI generated stuff, you know, at the time. 
<laughs> which 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 Japanese ladies are you talking about here? Well, let's uh, go back to our anyway. Report. I digress. Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah you, you digress. You digress. All right, so so go going on. back to the Jurutsu guy, probably will say it's not AI generated. Yes. So one of me, the, me personally, no, I think that's a real guy. So one of the questions you asked was if he's still alive or no. Is he in his? What, what, what do you think is his age at the time of taking the picture? Maybe. Was, mm, let me take a look at him again. What do you guys think? I think that he's maybe sixty. What do you think, Peter? Maybe sixty. Depends how much he have. I would say about sixty. Sixty. Uh, uh, you know, plus or minus five years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So by this point, he would be like almost eighty or somewhere. Yeah, something like about that. there. So if we take into account the average ex life expect expectancy in like Europe and shit, he probably is still alive, right? Let me let me ask you this: What country do you think that he's from? Just looking at him, just just looking at him, <laughs> just looking at him. Where do you think that he's from? I guess he's Chinese, man. Come on, man. Give me a better answer than that. Like, you know, they have all uh, like the minorities and stuff. Dude, come on, okay, man. Okay, I'm not, okay, I'm not okay, fucking okay. around with you here, I, man. Me neither, man. Me neither. Come on. Man. Okay, okay. If, you, if we're talking about like Europe, US, whatever, Western countries and stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Caucasian countries. Caucasian countries. Yeah. One of those Caucasian countries. So... Yeah, the Gistan. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I'm not joking around I mean, here anymore, man. <laughs> uh, uh, He's clearly from a Western country, or or I, I would say as as far east as Russia. It, what, what, what do they say? What, what do they usually say? Like finger in where? Where? What are you talking about? Like the freaking. Uh, Finger in the sky or something like, right, like that, right? If what are you, try, you fucking talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you, when you're trying to guess something and you don't know, you just kind of do the random thing. Oh, okay. I, I don't, I don't know, man. But just fucking guess. What, uh, what country I guess is he he's from? Uh, from Slovenia, man. Slovenia. What about you, Peter? Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Okay. What about you, Nate? That's really fucking hard, man. <laughs> That's really fucking that. hard, man. I would say, uh, let me look at his face again. Sasquatchuan <laughs> from what uh, Canada, right? One of those freaking. You know, he he Italy. looks like he's from Northern Italy. I'll say that, okay? Northern, Nor Italy. Northern Italy, Milano, Milano, like uh, you know our friend from Milano. Yeah, you know our friend, right? Reference to yeah. our friend. Yeah, you know. Are there any other thoughts that you, either of you two, want to add to this? Uh, you, you wanted to ask the question, Peter. Peter, you know. Actually, I already asked. I asked. I asked you. Have you ever tried his mattresses? Oh, actually, no, I haven't. Have you, Ivan? I mean, I slept on the yoga mat. I slept on the bamboo kind of thing. I slept on all the different things, you know. But I never slept on Jerusha mattress, I think. I don't think I have it either. Have you, Peter? Can we buy Jerusha mattresses right now? Of course you fucking can. Does it still exist? Of course. And actually, hey, I don't, take, actually, I don't know. Does the advertisement still exist? It, yeah, I think so. Yeah. What time have you seen it last time? In yeah. the airport. I, I, I just, I flew from Bangkok to here. 2022 in August, just like ah, a couple months ago. Uh, I I think, I'm again. pretty sure I saw the air, the advertisement. Yeah. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen uh, an international airport without this advertisement? I mean, yeah, but not lately. Mm. Not lately. Mm. Okay. All right, guys. Are there any other anything else that you want to um, talk about before we uh, get out of here? So the the mystery will remain kind of you know in the ether in a way, man. Sort of, sort of. 
yeah. P- Peter, do you have anything that you want to uh, talk about? Maybe not this minute. Maybe a little late. Let me think a little bit. Ivan, you? Yeah. Um, no. Nothing else. I mean, at, at, at this at, at this point, at this point, nothing else. But I think maybe after like a year or two, we can go back and discuss it again. Re- review if, it again. If there, if there will be some some new facts about the guy, you know. Yeah. And they, oh, another one question. I just I just came for the discussion. I haven't heard what did you speak before. Uh, do you have an, uh, any other pictures of this guy? Oh, it's always the same. There are a couple others that he took during the photo shoot, but the the photo shoot, like the picture that of the Derucci ad, that's the one, the only one that they actually used for the Derucci ads. But there are, are also some other ones where he's like at a desk, like writing something on the desk. But mm. this this is the only other one. And uh, may, uh, maybe I can ask the uh, I can ask Peter the same question I asked you, Nate. Yeah. Which mattress uh, would you buy? Like a uh, tabula rasa kind of thing. If you didn't know anything about Derucci or the other Australian company, I'll show you the picture. Uh, De Koala or Derucci mattress, what would you buy if you didn't know anything about either of those? These are like... Uh, two pictures. Uh, right here. De Koala or Derucci mattress. Uh, the color. I don't. I don't have anything bad about the color, but it looks like a little bit fake, just in front of the Ruche. Mm. So you would prefer the Ruche mattress for sure. Okay. If I can, I if I have uh, no uh, chance to try it, just mm. buy and buy advertisement. Sure the, the the what about the background? Do you like the blue background or the the Ruchi background? Actually, I like blue background. Okay, okay, but still, the Ruchi gets the point. Yeah, the Ruchi, this face get the point. Yeah. Okay. Good job, the Ruchi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right. All right. So, anything else that you want to talk about? You turn off the microphone, dude. What the fuck? Just now. Okay, why, why, okay. <laughs> what the fuck, we skipped the camps part, part <laughs> right? <laughs> she thought we were going to talk about the, you know. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, yeah. And about Meishani also. So, right. what, was your, what was your question? I just want to know what country you think the guy is from. Do you think he's still out there somewhere? Do you think he's alive? Um, I reckon he's. Do you think that he knows that his image is everywhere? We already talked about it, but I, I reckon that he's the like ninety percent that he's still alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, probably he's. What, what what did I say? He's from from, from Slo- Slovenia. Slovenia. Yeah. Some- you think he's from Slo- Slovenia? You think this? You look at this picture. You think this guy can live um, more twenty years more? I don't uh, think. Really. I think so. I mean, even though he's a little bit tense, you know, yeah. kind of under pressure, but he, he, he gives you the vibe that he kind of gives you the pressure, but not himself. You know, some people may be like that. I, I don't know. If maybe some people are like that. So he's kind of giving you the pressure, man. He's like, I already chosen the Jirucci. I have a good sleep. And man, you're spending your this pressure precious days and night of your life without this Derucci mattress, man. You are ruining your life kind of thing. So he, he doesn't look like a guy who puts a lot of pressure on himself because he already reached the Derucci level of excellence, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. He's putting the pressure on you. <laughs> He's telling you, my friend, you know, there is the only way to improve your sleep. And that way is the Derucci way. So I think he, he will live till he's 100 years old, man. He's, he's you gonna... think he's 100 years old? Jesus no, Christ, No, he will man. live to that age, man. He will live okay. 10 years more, enjoy the best life he can. All right, give, give the microphone to Peter. For me, Peter? It's, um, it's like opposite. That opposite? Said. Yeah, for me, he, this is the guy who is maybe 40 or 50. 
He drank. Dude, 40 or 50? Jesus yeah. Christ, man. That's like a hard 40, man. Yeah, who drank a lot, you know? <laughs> and had, had a very bad life. And you look, look at look Christ, at his man. eyes. There is no like no relaxing. I'm only like five years away from forty, man. If I look like this <laughs> fucking guy, come on, man. You look better. I say. <laughs> you look like he is a, his child. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and for me, he is just on the on the edge of his life. Like maybe like, so empty. You see, like his his head is so empty. His eyes are so empty. And uh, for me, like he's not happy enough to be a person who has a good sleep. Actually, interesting <laughs> point. Interesting point. So, what what do you think, Nate? All right. So I've got a fucking bombshell to drop on you guys. So this comes from the Wall Street Journal. So according to a 777-page prospectus that was filed in 2021 by the Darucci Healthy Sleep Co., his name is Timothy James Kingman, and he sold the rights to his photo to the Darucci company on August 15th, 2009 for an undisclosed amount of money. The Wall Street Journal did their own independent investigation in, into Timothy James Kingman, and found nobody by that name in the U.S. or China, but they did find a, a Timothy James Kingman, who was born in 1943 and died on June 1st, 2012. Further public records linked him to the name of John Timothy Durstein, who died the same day and had the same social security number, so they assumedly are one and the same person. The obituary for John Timothy Durstein stated that he studied at Stanford University and fought in the Vietnam War and had spent two decades living abroad, mainly in China. He went simply by the name of Tim and passed away shortly after surgery for a brain tumor on June 1st, 2012. He left behind an ex-wife, no children, and was survived by a sister and two nephews. What on on technology forums? A user who signed his post in the mid-2000s with the name Timothy Kingman described himself as an English teacher living in China, looking for tips to help students with listening comprehension. Mr. Durstein's sister, Johan Hansen of Port Hadlock, Irondale, Washington, said her brother lived in China during his later years, but was puzzled by the notion that he was featured in ads worldwide. She shared little else about him. A photo in the alumni magazine of Seattle Pre Preparatory School, where Mr. Durstein graduated from high school in 1962, showed him as a young tuxedoed man with the same unmistakable features as China's mattress man. So I'm sorry to do this to you guys, but um, I didn't want to let the truth get in the way of a good mystery. Just so. Just, just tell me, man. Yeah. Is it the same thing you did to us on April the first thing, kind of thing, man? <laughs> with the freaking uh, Putin, kind of. With, with the Putin trying to kind of, kind of. I, I, I didn't want the truth to, you know, get in the way of a good, a good mystery. So you, so. You, you already find the truth, found, found the truth. Yeah. So wait, but yeah. it's not the April first joke kind of thing. It's not April first, but. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did solve the mystery. It is, it is a guy named, uh, John, uh, what was the fucking, the fucking guy's name is, uh, John Timothy Durstein. And he's from US. He's from, he's American. What state? Uh, from Washington, Washington. or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah he, he fought in the Vietnam War. He was born in 1943. Yeah, actually, I believe in it. He looks like a guy who came from Vietnam War. Yeah, I I didn't want to let the truth get in the way of a good mystery on this one, so I'm I'm sorry to do this to you guys. You know, it was a dick move. Yeah. It was a dick move. Do you come here again? I'm. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm sorry, guys. It was a bad, dick. It was bad, a dick move. Bad move, man. Bad dick move. move. But uh. But the salad was good. What was good? Salad? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, <laughs> vodka was good as well. Actually, you know, you could have Googled this. You could have Googled him, and you would have been able to find out. But, but I know, I knew, I knew you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> We just uh, too much, too I knew you like wouldn't mysteries. Google him. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and I thought he was just like some Slovenian guy, man. Yeah. But uh, definitely an, uh, an interesting story, man. And uh, yeah. It's a cautionary tale. Why? Because you never know if you take a white monkey job, you never know how famous you're going to get. You know, like I, it doesn't because he he passed away in 2012, so he didn't he didn't actually get to know how famous his face would actually become. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'll say this. R.I.P. John Timothy Durstein. That's his that was his legal name. He never he never got to see how famous his face would be actually become he's just like a boy who is famous yeah. after he's dead yeah <laughs> so you know what man john timothy durstein i salute you same yeah. here man r.i.p rest in peace r.i.p man yeah so all right man do you do you have any apologies shout outs or clarifications you like to make what, before what, we what, get out of here what, what was the official name of the John Timothy Durstein. John Timothy Durstein. Yeah, again, rest in peace, my friend. Not my wait. He's not my friend. He's kind of. I mean, kind of, kind of. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like I know him. You know, I feel like I've known him for a long time, so I can call him my friend, because you know, even though he's no longer with us. He's with us in spirit form, you know? Yeah, and so many hours in the airport waiting for the plane we spent together. I agree. I I just wanted to say that, you know, like, um, in any way, I don't want to sound in, like, you know, disrespectful or in any way, man. I, yeah. like, really respect you, man, for your courage and stuff. And I wanted to say, you are like, you know that song, Lose Yourself? By Eminem. Eminem. Or, yeah. There is an instrumental version of that with just instruments playing. Yeah. And I want to say that you're my friend, or is, you are instrumental too. Powerful. Powerful. That's powerful. Thank you. Thank you for adding that to the conversation, honestly. Yeah. So um, I would like to give a shout out to our former classmate, a.k.a. Tong Shui Man, uh, Moises, who is from Mexico or Peru or something like that. He's got like 10 last names and I can't rem remember all of them. So I'm just going to try to go by memory here. So Moises Fernandez. Valenzuela, Taquito, Jimenez, Mountain Dew, Jackson, or whatever your name is, you know who you are. Um, well, we, 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 well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. What? Because Moises taught us something in Italian, right? I think Peter still remembers that. What? Italian phrase. Moises taught us. No. Mento, no? Ah. Mentos the fresh maker, or? Mento. Mento pomodoro nel culo. What, what the fuck? It, this is a family show, dude. You you know the meaning? Well, I'm not going to say that I know the meaning because, like, what does, it mean? what does it mean? I'm not going to say it here, man. It's a family show. Okay. Anyway. So let this phrase be another one mystery. You can solve it by yourself. Yeah. I'd also like to just apologize to you two for making you come over to my house and, you know, solve a mystery that I, I already solved. I mean, I didn't want to. I'm sorry. But you had fun, right? It was awesome, man. I'm telling you. You had fun. Yeah. Got pretty drunk, too. 
Peter, what about you? Do you have any apologies, shout outs, or clarifications you'd like to make? No. <laughs> Not even one? If <laughs> somebody feels something bad about what I said about this Mr. Derucci, just uh, like, don't uh, hang on this pain, please. Let it go. Don't, don't hang on the pain. The what, what guy was saying from the Sopranos, accept the sufferings of, of the, the world. world. <laughs> the the first Buddhist true or something like that. Mm. The 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 life is suffering, right? The, yeah. the first one. There is, so. there is a suffering. Oh, okay. All right, man. Well, I think it's time to get out of here. Like candy corn through a hole in the bottom of a dirty pillowcase, so too are the minutes of our podcast. But don't fret, dear listener. We'll be back again to breathe new life into a spooky mystery next time. Ooh. <laughs> Помните, ребята, истина прячется в тени. Вместе мы найдем ее. This is Super Mystery Bros. I just came from You don't care about there. Timothy, well, John, Timothy, Durstein? Durstein and Durstein kind of sound alike. Mm -hmm. A little bit. You, you want... We need the lyrics. Last time it was more shocking. So the Durucci guy was American. He was an American guy. Not Serbian, not what did you who knows? What did you say who knows? Who did you say that he was? Azerbaijan. <laughs> he said Caucasus country. Caucasus country. Come on. Man. But actually he could be uh, from anywhere, like I mean his roots. Yeah, I mean uh, well I thought he was from like he looks like he could be from Norway. Oh, yeah, Yeah, I think we just can uh, how to say blue in everything. Uh, yeah. yeah, and see if if there is something good. If not, if there is nothing good, we we just don't use anything. If there is something uh, good, we just use a little. Uh, furious ones, uneasy ones. Where are you going, via via? Serious ones. Uh, может мы можем просто первый куплет и припев сделать, попробуем. Давай. Ну можно несколько попыток, это легче будет, наверное. Да. We just do the first. First uh, part and then the chorus. Yeah. Do, do you know the words? No. If you do want, you can. You can. I know the tune, but I don't know. You, you got pinion here too. Huh? If you want to sing, we got pinion too. That's I recording. I hold you there, I lose you there. 
Следующий куплет может тогда будет опять начать с перебором. Dedicated to John Timothy Jerstein, the ordinary road. Rest in peace. <laughs> 